agree with the hypocrites that we have said things and then we ended up doing things opposite. And we carry that into worship. We carry that into our relationship with God. So Peter's in the fishing boat and Jesus there meets him on the shore. They recognize it's Jesus. They come running the shore and Jesus has on the shore a meal. A charcoal dinner with fish broiling on it. It was just, last time we saw Peter around a, a bonfire was in the courtyard. He was trying to warm himself and then he was getting questioned about this Jesus and he was denying his Lord and even cursing doing it. And now in the very presence of the same Jesus is another fire. But there's a, a tender invitation, a meal. And Jesus, by this meal, is inviting Peter back into fellowship with him. And it's at this meal then that Peter is asked by Jesus, Peter, do you love me? Yes, I do. Then feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I do. Then feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Three times Peter denied him. Three times Jesus recommissioned him. And there in a meal, in the very presence of enemies, Peter and Jesus were. The enemies, Satan. Satan wanted to squash Peter. Remember, Jesus warned Peter that Satan is going to sift you like wheat. And there in the very presence of Satan and all those who thought they had won the battle against Peter's soul, Jesus prepares a meal in the presence of those enemies, those spiritual enemies. And he reclaims Peter. And Satan loses. This meal we're about to eat. Is done in the presence of enemies. Around us. Are demons. Satan and his legions. Sin. And death. And we bring all of that here. And part of it we know. And the great majority of it we have no clue about. But make no mistake about it, we live in a world full of warfare, spiritual warfare. In the middle of all this enemy is this meal he prepares for us. And when you come to this meal, you can let the shame go. And all those reasons why you don't think you belong here. All those reasons why you don't think God would love you any longer. Or commission you to be his servant in the world. This meal recommissions you. It re-invites you into his presence and solidifies that relationship. And in the presence of enemies, it makes a clear statement of a victory. Disappointment or shame. Uh, Sally and I went to um, Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C or Sally did actually, and uh, she found very, very, very tucked away in the, the book called The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom. Uh, that book is about 40 years old now almost. Um, I remember it as a child, one of those books I was supposed to have read and I never got around to reading it. But Sally picked it up and she gave it to me, she says, you got to read this, and I agree, you all have to read it, The Hiding Place. The Hiding Place, Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy and her father uh, had an underground um, ministry in Holland protecting the Jewish people during the Holocaust. Uh, they saved many, many Jews, but eventually they were caught. Corey and Betsy went into the concentration camp. Betsy did, never came out. Corey ended up coming out. But this book is an incredible tale of, in the middle of enemies, in the middle of incredible darkness, it doesn't get any worse than that. There was still a meal prepared. And Corey's and Betsy's head, their head was anointed with oil. They experienced the very presence and love of God in the middle of all that darkness, in the middle of that brokenness and those wounds and that disappointment, in the middle of the shame and the guilt, in the middle of the darkness. God never left his people. It's an incredible story. The Lord prepares a table before me, the presence of my enemies. They never had such dignity as they were when they were in the concentration camp, trying to stripped of all their dignity. 
Got here a picture. This is a 1972, I think, at Sault Ste. Marie, Copper Harbor. Or Cop. Is that the same thing, Sault Ste. Marie and Copper Harbor? It's in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, I know that. I think it's Copper Harbor. Um, I'm, I'm the one um, skipping stones, that's my brother Tim. You look back at pictures like this, and let's just say it's you you're looking at. Um, you can go a lot of different places with pictures. You can see dreams that were, that never came true. You can see things that happened to you that you've come to regret and have come to dog you. The disappointments and the wounds that you carry. You can see how you've acted over the years and the reasons why you may carry shame and guilt. That's what you could carry with you. Especially as you grow older and look back at how things could have been. Or you can take seriously the words of the Lord as your shepherd. He anoints your head with oil. He's about healing and wholeness, about bringing redemption to you and giving you strength and grace to get through those places where it's just going to be the way it is. And he prepares a table before you in the presence of enemies. There's no shame for God's people. His grace covers you. And this meal is a, sign a signifying event of that. More than a symbol, it is his love and his grace, his healing. In Jesus' holy name, amen.